with Blake Bell in the game. Blake Bell in the game on fourth down and one. He takes the snap. Gets to about the two at the one. End zone, touchdown, Oklahoma. The belldozer does it again. The point after is good. And how about Blake Bell, the belldozer? Bob, you know I've been hard on them, pulling him out of the game, but this is why you have him for these types of situations. Fourth and one to go. Blake Bell gets stopped in the backfield. Right there, there's a guy on his legs, hurdles him, and then he gets met at the one or two yard line and just runs over number 19, Broderick Brown for Oklahoma State. Boy, it must be nice to be 6'6", 254 pounds, put your nose down and find that goal line. The other thing, too, that I think is impressive, Bob Stoops and his coaching staff, they were ready because you had two different calls on what could have been, and they thought, obviously, from their sideline was a touchdown reception by Sterling Shepard. What they quickly realized was, hey, they ruled that incomplete in spite of the fact that one of the officials signaled touchdown, it's fourth and one. And they made the quick personnel change, got Bell on the field on fourth down and one, and they get the touchdown. You talk, Danny, all the time about the different situations the coaching staffs prepare for. They were prepared there. The squid kick. And we are headed to overtime in the Bedlam rivalry game between Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. Well, Reese, we've had a good day here. A great As day. This is the first time that Bedlam has ever gone to overtime. So overtime will decide it between Oklahoma State and Oklahoma for the first time ever. And how about Clint Shelf? Oh. Talk about this stage, Danny. But you know what? He had an exceptional three quarters. The fourth quarter slowed down a little bit. He had a hot hand early. Play action on first down. Shelf to the outside to about the 16-yard line. Biggest key for Clint Shelf is just to stay within himself, keep throwing through his progressions, treat it like you have been all game. Second and one after the Anderson catch. Randall. And now they're back in the red zone. And you made a great point. This game now basically comes down to red zone offensive execution. And if you would compare it to the rest of the game, Oklahoma State is five for five with five touchdowns in their red zone possessions. Oklahoma on eight possessions has four touchdowns, two field goals, a missed field goal, and a fumble. So. O Oklahoma State 100% on the afternoon in the red zone. Chell, high throw to the outside, incomplete. Through the hands of Josh Stewart. It'll be second down and 10 from the 13. That was a little reminiscent of the interception that was thrown earlier in the game, almost identical. Clint Shelf threw a pass to Josh Stewart that was batted up and picked off by Oklahoma. Those throws to the left for a right-handed quarterback. Sometimes you got to make sure you get your shoulders facing that target. And Clint Shelf struggled there, but now that every play is crunch time. Got to be perfect. Screen to the outside to Stewart. And he's inside the 10 to the 9-yard line where it will be third down and a long six. Javon Harris, Julian Wilson came up to combine on the tackle. First possession of the first overtime. Baba Shoes and Danny Cannell, Maria Taylor here in Norman. Third down. Shelf 
At the goal line, tipped around, and it's incomplete. Intended for Blake Jackson. Boy, that ball was in there for a long time. Here's a look at the very end of the play. Blake Jackson in some traffic. Ball thrown a little bit behind him. And Clint Shelf, for the first time, just looked a little indecisive on where he wanted to go with that ball, was holding it quite a long time. Oklahoma State, for the first time this afternoon, when they've gotten the ball in this situation, they'll have to settle for the field goal. So it's Quinn Sharp from 26 yards out to try and score first. Play clock winding down. They get the snap off, and Sharp puts it right down the middle. Still in all, though, that's the first time that we have seen Oklahoma get the red zone stop on defense. Right, it just shows you the magnitude of the situation. Things change. Guys start playing a little differently. You start squeezing, squeezing the ball a little bit tighter. Those receivers got to look the pass in. But, you know, it's where great players step up. A lot of guys like that situation. And now you, a former quarterback, flip it around. Now you're Landry Jones. Mm -hmm. It's a senior, your last home game on senior day, your last opportunity in the Bedlam rivalry game. You have at times had a love-hate relationship with your fan base, and now you have a chance to beat Oklahoma State in overtime and close out your home career. But you, you can't ask for a better no, situation. No, you, you gotta love this opportunity. And don't forget the Big 12 is still wide open if Kansas State does happen to stumble against Texas. <laughs> Breaking a tackle is Miller, and he's inside the 20. It's a good run by Trey Miller. A gain of seven. Great second effort by Trey Miller, able to keep his balance and grab those extra few yards. Landry Jones, last two games, is over 1,000 yards, 1,054. He had 554 last week, 500 yards today. This time, it's Brennan Clay. He busts free. Clay at the five. Touchdown, and Bedlam's over. Jones, how about if you have a run game? Wow, oh, Brennan Clay. Brennan Clay absolutely runs over a couple Oklahoma State defenders. Missed tackle there. Then just runs over number eight, low. Breaks one more tackle. There's another safety trying to go around the legs. And Brennan Clay, what a great individual effort. Rivalry games are all about big moments. Doesn't get much bigger than that in overtime for Oklahoma. What a finish. Dayton Lowe couldn't bring down Brennan Clay. Bedlam ends in overtime. Oklahoma over Oklahoma State. So long from North.